Hi, my name is Cy Horton and I'm a sales engineer for Farrow UK. In part 3 of this Scene 7 New Features Guide, what I'd like to touch on are the on-site controls that we've added into the scanner interface and into Faro Scene itself. So first off, what's new at a glance? Well, we've given you the ability through Scene to now control the scanner interface. So if prior to visiting site you want to set up a series of projects, you can do it via Scene from the comfort of your desk. Alternatively, when on-site, we've also added in the new on-site compensation, which was actually released in Scene 6.2. And in addition to this, we've added now the facility to create on-site registrations as well. So first off, we'll look at these three solutions before we do some live demonstration work. With regards to on-site compensation, it allows you to verify and adjust the scanner's compensation to a specific site or application live on site. You can do that via Scene or Scene LT, but the on-site compensation can only be executed for the new range of scanners. When on site, as long as you've printed out the targets, you simply place those on a surface of a wall and then you run the compensation check. From an on-site registration perspective, you can do it via Wi-Fi back to a tablet. So all we need to do is connect to the tablet and then we're processing that data in scene, whether it be to a new project or to an existing set of previous scans. And we can control the scanner via the user interface or via a web interface or by scene. But as long as we're connected to scene, then we can automatically register that data. So here you can see an overview map on the scanner screen where we've got a series of scans. So it's doing that for us automatically on the scanner. To set it up, it's literally a case of turning the option on on the scanner. Now if you've already got an S-series scanner, there is a firmware update to enable you to get access to these settings. As you can see there, we can either link to spheres, checkerboards, planes, we can colorize and we can build a scan point cloud. And then we also get a list of scans. The benefit here, if anything happens, we can see that we've got an issue with one of the scans. We also get to see this via the scene interface, so we can see the distribution of our scans on site. So it gives you a better understanding of whether it's actually going to work. So now what we'll do is we'll drop in first off and look at the on-site compensation. The first thing we'll look at are the new scanner controls and how to turn them on. So in the new interface, if you go to your settings, in the general tab, you scroll to the bottom and you turn on the scanning category so that when you go back you now have a new tab with the scanning category on it. Under the scanning category we have the new scanner control, the on-site registration and the on-site compensation. So firstly I'm going to connect to my scanner so I'm going to do that via Wi-Fi so if I come in and find my scanner and click connect if you don't know the password then everything is on your scanner and you can change it to be unique to yourself. So from a scanner control perspective if we just go into this the first thing it wants us to do is enter the IP address of our scanner. So my particular scanner is this IP address, so I'll click connect. Now with the new range of scanners, there are two variations on the Wi-Fi. So under the Manage tab, under General and under Wi-Fi, in here we have a wireless LAN and an access point. And you might find that by default yours is set to wireless LAN. And that basically allows it to connect to an office network where you can then pick up internet access. So if you were updating a firmware over the internet, you can do that directly to the scanner. Alternatively, you could do that via an SD card in the traditional way, and all the instructions for that are on our knowledge base. But I've automatically flipped mine over to an access point, hence it's given me a IP address and an encryption key that you can see here. And if I was connecting through a browser, I'd use that IP address with a colon port 80 to connect to it. And in here we can do everything we need to do on the scanner control systems. But what I need to do here is I'm going to go in and start an on-site compensation. Before I do that, I've got a document here which gives us the target range. So I'm currently about to do mine in an environment where the ceiling is around 2.6 meters high. So I've printed off 10 targets. I've put six of those targets up the wall, spaced evenly two along the ceiling and two on the floor. So if I just close that down, we'll then go to start compensation. Again, it's asking us to connect to the scanner. So we're now connected to our scanner where we can see our serial number and our firmware. Incidentally, if you're using some of the features 
in this new scene 7 there is a firmware update in order to do this. So then it asks us to place targets. So as you can see here we place a series of targets up the wall and those targets have got to be in a range of minus 50 to plus 50 degrees from the scanner. When we've done that we need to go to the horizontal alignment of the scanner. Based on the position that the scanner finishes in we need to rotate it so it's planar with the targets on the wall. And then when we're ready we press the scan and compensate button and this can typically take around 15 minutes to do the compensation because what the scanner will do is once we've aligned it it will then do a full rotation and it will start just to the left of the targets and it will finish just to the right of the targets. so it's using those targets to perform the compensation a little bit like we automatically do a window scan if we've done a preview scan so that whole process is now completed it took between 13 to 15 minutes to perform the compensation and the key here it really is trying to get your targets between that minus 50 and the plus 50 location so putting them on the ceiling really helps and on the floor so as you can see over on the right hand side a significant improvement has been achieved by doing the on-site compensation so if I'm happy with that compensation I can choose the yes option and click finish alternatively if I'm not happy I can click no but down at the bottom I can also check the report for that particular compensation so in here it gives us a report so if we're working on a live job and somebody's about to query accuracy or you know you're chasing accuracy when you get to site spare 15 minutes at the beginning create your compensation report and then when you deliver your job you can deliver it with a compensation report to say you've done a specific compensation on this day date time and month and you can attribute that to your work in this particular instance I'm just going to click apply compensation and then click finish and when it's done that the compensation has been applied so doing your on-site compensation is as simple as that so to perform an on-site registration under the scanning tab again I now click on the on-site registration button in here once again it asks us to connect to the scanner via the IP address so I'll just type in my IP address for this particular scanner and click connect so now once we're connected to the scanner we can start to think about our on-site registration so first off if I click on on-site registration it will then take me to the interface of the scanner screen now for the purposes of this movie I'm actually recording this via my laptop but I've also got a Microsoft Surface Pro 4 tablet which I could use on site so the first thing we need to do is set up a project so if I go into the manage tab and then go into our projects and clusters I've got my default cluster in here so I'm just going to duplicate that and then we're going to change the name and we'll just call it registration and then we'll rename our file base name to be registration as well so now we've got our project set up we go back we go back again now we've got our on-site registration option so clicking on here we can choose whether to enable on-site registration or not and whilst also on site when we're processing that data afterwards we can choose to find spheres checkerboards planes we can turn on the colorization and we can also build our scan point clouds so these two options here are generally what will happen during the processing phase within scene 7 anyway or previous versions of scene down to scene 6 as we scroll down we can choose to do no registration target based top view based cloud to cloud or top view and cloud to cloud now I'm going to leave the settings on here and then once I've got all that set up I simply go back to my home screen the next thing we'll do is we'll set up our parameters so for the purposes of this I'm going to turn off color and I'm going to use the lowest resolution possible just for speed I could generally work at the resolutions that I need to there's no issue there so if we go back to our home screen and I go to my map option just so I can show you on the screen and then I press start scan and let the scanner do its thing so that scan is now finished and what it will do is it'll appear in our tree and you'll see that it's got a question mark by it and then it turns into a processing phase so the scanner now will download the scan directly to Faro scene and whilst it's doing that I can go and move the scanner so that one was actually transferred and I'm just going to click start scan and then that will set the next scan going but whilst it's doing that you can see here on the screen that I've actually got the 2d layout plan of everything I've done so far so the system doesn't need you to wait for one scan to finish and download before you start the next one in here I've just pressed scan 
the second scan will have finished and then it will download that scan into our tree and it will show us in our overview map and whilst it's downloading I'll be moving the scanner to the next location and so on and so forth until you've finished the complete scan job. Also you still need to follow good principles of scanning especially when using top view and cloud to cloud because you still need the overlap between the two but you've got confidence that as you're walking around that is going to work from a registration perspective. So just for speed, I've forged ahead and done a few more scans. So as you can see here on the screen, I've now got the layout of this particular building very quickly with the scan locations. If you click on any of them, I can see which scan relates to which one here. So I could continue and add more scans into this process, or if I'm happy, I could just click finish. Alternatively, if I wanted to start a new cluster, for instance, I might be heading onto a new floor, I can click onto the cluster button. But when I'm happy, if I just click finish, it will then take me back into scene. And if I just right click and view my project or click on the explore tab, we'll then see the registration effects that we've captured on site. So straight away, you can see here, we've got all the scans perfectly located in their correct locations. And if I were to create a quick clipping box around these, just so we can show you what they're looking like in plan, Rotate that around, drag that down, drag it through the windows, drag that up, and then we can see the layout of our building. So as you can see, using the on-site registration, either with a laptop or a Windows-enabled tablet, we can very quickly go to site and we can quickly register whilst we're on site. From a scene licensing perspective, in part one of these tutorials, I also showed you how we can transfer the license from one device to another. So from a day-to-day -day perspective, you're using your license on a laptop, and you don't have a dongle, you can transfer that license to a tablet for when you're doing site work or vice versa. Alternatively, if you have a dongle, you literally take it out and plug it into the other device. So to summarize, we've gone through on-site compensation where using a series of predefined markers on site, we can perform a compensation check on our scanner before we then move forward to our building survey. We've then connected to our scanner via laptop or tablet and using the new on-site registration and a top view and cloud to cloud registration process, we very quickly moved around the building and had the system automatically register it whilst we're on site, meaning that we save masses of time when getting back to the office by having to load the scans in and process them and do the registration ourselves. Thank you for watching, I hope it's been of use and please feel free to watch out for forthcoming tutorials.